Now I had mentioned Mordred. Mordred! In the earliest things, there is a nephew, Madras, who uh, does start a war against his, uh, in that case, uncle. But it soon became much more salacious in that Arthur was second boy to his mother. First boy, and so he inherited all. But his older sister, Morgan, was princess of Cornwall. In those days, there was a, a warlord, brutish nature, by the name of Uther, Uther Pendragon, and he laid waste to anyone he didn't like. And there was the prince of Cornwall, Gorlois, and his beautiful wife, Brain. They live upon the spit of land that is Cornwall in their keep at Tintagel. And Uther decided that a grain should be his. Lois mounted the army and rode to meet this challenge. Uther, through guile and magic and cunning and brute force, <coughs> left poor Lois in dust. And so it was that Igraine became his wife. The daughter that Igraine had born to poor Lois was Morgan, and she got nothing, as always happens. The boy, Uther's son, was born, and then the inconvenient daughter, the sister, was left in a keep amongst the storms, the waves upon the rocks, and the ravens. Morgan learned from those ravens. She learned from the seals bobbing the rocks. She learned that sometimes, can't take your revenge by yourself. And so, as the years went by, and Arthur became a new king, eager and young and lustful, and Morgaine, older and wiser, slipped into his bed, and none the wiser to him, sired the son, when Arthur found out that a babe had been born in Tintagel's walls that was his. He was wroth. Arthur rode with his companions to this little keep of rocks, and he demanded that Morgan bring his child to him. <laughs> you ask for something I will not give, brother. Take your men. Arthur, not stop. He in horror that this child should exist at all, battered down the keep walls, and there found Morgan with all the young mothers, the duchy, all hundred of them, with their new babes at their breasts. <laughs> How will you find which is yours now? Arthur at that point did something terrible, truly terrible, that did curse him for the rest of the story. He is put forth as the, the brightest and best, most good of kings, and yet here he did the worst that he could have possibly done. He had all those children ripped from their mothers, placed in a boat, and sent out this place. The wailing of the mothers, the wailing of the children, slowly became silence, and he left, realizing what horrible thing he had done. Morgan, of course, had hidden her baby somewhere else entirely. And so Mordred grew up as one of her sons without any influence from Arthur or anyone else who might change his heart against the evil father that his mother told him about. And I do wonder, even today, how much we, as children, carry with us of our parents' feuds parents' beliefs, the lines that they draw, how much of that we walk into without realizing. This is Margaret's lullaby. <laughs>
I'll share your belief, and you'll always know that your father's a thief, and you won't understand the cause of your grief, but you'll always follow the voices beneath that sing loyalty, 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 only to me, son. Your spirit will hate her, the flower who married my brother, the traitor, and you will expose his puppet to behavior, for you are the proof of how he betrayed her loyalty, 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 loyalty only to me. Child, the darkness will rise from the deep and carry you down into sleep. Child, My vengeance unfold for the child of my body, the flesh of my soul will die in returning that birthright he stole. Hush.